Well, welcome to Wembley, this marvellous stadium where some oh, great team... Oh, oh. Sorry, I'm late. There was delays on the Metropolitan Line. Uh, who are you? Uh, I'm John Motson. I used to commentate on the Cup Final here. Oh, I, I'm not sure if you know I won a competition two years ago. So well, that's even more important. <laughs> All the very <laughs> best to you. Thank Cheers. you. All right, Bye. let me get on with Bye -bye. this. Welcome to Wembley. Fans of the world's biggest teams have filled this stadium in anticipation of everything from the Champions League Final to the FA Cup Final. But this weekend, thousands will descend upon Wembley for two teams you probably haven't heard of and a tournament you probably haven't heard of, but you should because after 536 teams have competed in over 500 matches, two are left standing in competition for one of the world's biggest amateur tournaments, the FA Vars. It's Glossop North End versus North Shields FC. So I'm heading up north to visit these towns, meet the people and of course get to know the players. So here we are, Glossop. We're about 14 miles from Manchester. Looking around, you can really tell it's the kind of area where hard work and community means a lot to them. So when their football team makes the final, naturally they're going to get behind them. So much so that I've been told just around the corner on the high street, they've temporarily opened a club shop selling merchandise ahead of the big game. So this shop, I mean, what's happened here? It's owned by Metrix Butchers. They've kindly loaned it to us for a period to sell merchandise and we've pretty much sold out of everything. What's the differences you've found in, in supporting your local club? You know the directors of the club, the volunteers of the club, and there's a real connection. I've gone through um, quite a, a serious illness and the support that I've had from the club has been second to none. They came to hospital with the League Cup. I was in hospital when we won this cup. I was in hospital when we won this cup. And there's no way I'm going to be anywhere else but Wembley when we win the Vars. Oh, it's just unbelievable the sense of community you get just from hanging out with the guys there in the pop-up store. And if that hasn't proven enough just how behind the team the small town of Glossop is, right next door the butcher I've been told will show us. I hear you've been putting on quite the preparations ahead of the game. We have a pork pie that we make that's a national award winner and what we've done is we've, we've sprayed it blue. And sprayed it blue? Yeah, we've sprayed it blue. Do you want to come and have a look? Yeah. All the local shops are behind them, and the local producers are all behind them. We're all backing them. In your opinion, why is it Glossop North End deserve this? They're already double winners. This is like really like the icing on the cake for them, and I think it, I think they fully deserve it for managing to have such a fantastic season. Okay, well we've been in Glossop less than a day and already a Copper 90 fan by the name of Joel has gotten wind of us being here and given us a call and told us that he's actually got a key to the club stadium and that he'd love to give us a tour. This is it. The ground is officially known as the Arthur Goldthorpe Stadium, though it is known to everyone in Glossop as Surrey Street. I like it. How many does it hold? 1,300. A long time ago, me and my dad and my brother, we got here with um, uh, other volunteers and we just painted this ground blue and white. As long as I've been watching them, this is the best season we've ever had. The Premier League, you see people diving, you don't get any of that in this league. It's get, if, you go, if you go down, you've gone down for a reason. It's proper football, is what I call it. Now usually with Cover 90 I'm used to covering training sessions during the day as per professional clubs do but these guys are amateurs remember they've got regular day jobs and this is an amateur tournament and you can really feel that it's a different kind of training session there's a buzz and if you listen closely they're talking about Wembley constantly comparing the pitch and the atmosphere. I've played for Glossop since I was six I used to watch him have my own heroes at Glossop when I, when I used to go down with my dad and my brother so uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, weird playing for the men's team and getting to Wembley, uh, twice for myself. So I think there's five of us who played at Wembley last time. So, uh, you know, everyone, everyone knows how big it is for the town. Last time, uh, even when we lost, we had an open top uh, tour in the town centre. Can you just uh, map out for me a bit of your, you know, your weekly uh, schedule? Get up at six, start work at quarter past seven, uh, finish at five, two, three times a week. We'll be training, so I'll come straight home, straight out to football, getting maybe 11, half 11 at night and then repeat. We've been like pros this week, we've trained at Everton the other day. We're going to be training at Arsenal on Friday, so 
You just don't get to do that, do you? Now, Kevin, you're one half of the pair that's going to be the first identical twins to play at Wembley. Do you ever use that to play up on the opposition? To be fair, it's happened this season at Colm, actually. I got booked once in the first half, and <laughs> he booked me on the stroke of half time, and he thought I'm my brother, so I think. <laughs> For me in particular, it's 24 7. Having worked at a professional club and see how it's done at the top level. You know, I like to try and instill it in the players uh, at the level that we're at. Everyone always wants to be a professional footballer and I think it's the nearest thing you'll ever get to be in a professional football because not every professional footballer gets to play at Wembley. When we go to Wembley, I'll be sat on the top table with Greg Dyke. So it's just so different. In speaking and watching the boys at training last night, you can really tell that they are well up for this final and they really want to banish that result of 2009. But there are two teams to this fixture and that's why today we've come up to North Shields, a few K from Newcastle, where our first port of call is the team's star striker. He scored 16 goals in eight games in this tournament and he wants to speak to us at the ground. Let's go. How are, How are you feeling ahead of the big game at Wembley? Very excited, as uh, I'm sure you can imagine. And uh, I'll probably be lying if I said I hadn't been dreaming about scoring. You just look at this, it's a great little uh, ground, but the difference is just yeah. as big as it gets. The difference sort of sums up the competition for non-league teams. It's, it's not just for myself, uh, for my teammates, it's for those people who come and watch those games on cold Tuesday nights and Saturday afternoon to almost repay them for all those years. But what do you do for work? I'm a manager of a care home. Uh, I look after adults with uh, learning disabilities and autism. That's something I, I thoroughly enjoy, I absolutely love. We've got plasters, we've got barmen, we've got severs, we've got all sorts, we've got a few students in there. I actually hear that uh, you guys have got your own little ultras set up, is that right? Yeah, they stand just on the hill up there. They've named it the Curva Nord. Uh, <laughs> and they follow us absolutely everywhere. And they give you something extra to play for. They're behind you 100%. Gareth's passion for the town was evident and he told me about an event which the club and local council were running at lunchtime for school kids in the area. But he told me before that I should visit the North Shields Quay, so I organised to meet assistant manager Andy Bowman there. How important is the area's support in these tournaments, having them behind you? It's everything. Ever since the, the first round really everyone's kind of went right, we can get to Wembley. Tongue in cheek really, not, but it's, it's come good. I think it's helped um, that Newcastle and Sunderland haven't had great seasons. I don't say that, you know, with a smile on my face. Yeah. And I think they like, they like the idea of a, a, a local club whose players have to go to work on Monday, you know. While I was looking around the fish market, it didn't take long before I met a lifelong North Shields fan. You were at the last uh, final that North Shields made for the Amateur Cup or the FA Vars. Yeah, what it was called the FA Amateur Cup in, in the 60s when I went, that was 1969. We won the final 2-1 against uh, Sutton United and then here we are again nearly 50 years later and I never thought it would happen again so I'm absolutely delighted. Sign him up, sign him up. Grassroots level, you need that thought that you can accomplish that one day, that's what you need. What is it about North Shield that you like? It's like the players and the atmosphere at the ground. It makes me proud to be, um, come from North Shield. We, we only last 10, 20 years, but they're, they're the next generation. Now walking around North Shields, I've kept hearing about this incredible football publication that's been made by North Shields fans for all types of football fans, so I figured who better to speak to about the club and of course the magazine and this incredible Vars run than the boys themselves. I've come across it only today and I have read almost every page. Where did the idea come from? It's a fundraiser for North Shields, but we didn't want it to be just about North Shields. Do something different, add a bit of culture, add a bit of music, stories that relate to people, normal people, you know. But let's move on to why we're all here really. Saturday's game against uh, Glossop. I think it's put your faith back in, in football. A lot of the fans who are at North Shields are, are frustrated Premier League fans. What I love about it is being able to stand in the pub afterwards in the clubhouse next to the centre forward. We were talking about how this is such a big moment for the uh, amateur players getting to play at Wembley, but for you guys, it's a, it's a proper day out. As soon as the, we played the semi-final and, and won the, the second leg, got a phone call from Andy Bowman, who mentioned that there's a spot for a, for a mascot. So my eldest son, Joe, he's going to be walking onto the, the hallowed turf. Irrespective of the result, it'll be the, the, one of the greatest days for me. Dear Ryan Andy back to see if he can be mascot as well. <laughs> <laughs> It's 
another training session, or as I should say, evening training session. This time we're training at Sunderland's official training grounds. They've given the boys a, a pitch that's as close as Wembley as possible for them to train on. And you can see, just like Glossop, can't wait for Saturday. Loads of people sending text messages, tweeting, Facebook wishing us good luck. I've said to a lot of people, this, this area is unique to football. And when situations like this arise and that, we all want to muck in and help each other. For any team from the North East, no matter what state, standing or status you play at, to get the opportunity to play at Wembley, you deserve a massive pat on the back. Sometimes it'll be pouring down the rain on a cool December night. We're playing a rubbish team and there'll still be three, four hundred there. Like I say, without them coming and paying their money to watch, we're, this, this wouldn't be possible. All right, well, that concludes our tour of the North and our discovery into two incredible teams taking part in one hell of an amateur tournament. Glossop, North Shields, I really couldn't pick a winner, but what I can tell you is both of them really have taken us aback with their hospitality, their sheer passion for football and their football club. So all that's left to do now is to head to Wembley, where we'll be followed by thousands of fans dreaming of bringing the trophy home. When you think these lads are playing here and half the professional footballers have never ever played at Wembley. When we was here six years ago, the okay. lad in the Glossop shirt played. My understanding is you're an ex-player, you played in the Tasman final. Yeah. What do you think they're going through right now? A bunch of amateur players about to take the field at Wembley. Probably the same thing we're going through in 2009. <laughs> Just want to win it, don't you? Get out there and win it. It's in our heart. You might have Manchester City, you might have Manchester United, just round the corner. But where we where we're from, that's where we, we represent. It all feels it's just brought everybody back together. I think you got hundred percent commitment from these um, where is at the minute watching the castles like watching the Our age, we're not really going to probably see Newcastle go to Wembley, so they say it's a day out of Wembley and the local team is nothing better than people who actually have passion for the game. for them than anything else, it's great to see. It's not like, you know, world beating football, but we give it everything that we've got on the pitch and they seem to like it and it's a local team that's just fantastic to see and giving them some back as well as personally for the players as well. The players are walking out, the fans are on their feet. This really is the stuff dreams are made of. As two small towns and two amateur teams of their day out, their final at Wembley. This is incredible.
massively overwhelmed. I've got my friends there, my family there, my girlfriend there, everybody that I love so much of my life. That's, that's brilliant, mate. To give people who support local teams the chance of coming to Wembley, um, it's hugely important that just this occasion doesn't stay with the top teams. It comes to other places, other people who can come and support the local team. And so it ends with a bunch of McDonald's managers, glass fitters, plumbers and teachers at Wembley celebrating the final with the people that call them their heroes, their local town. If that doesn't show what amateur local football is all about, I don't know what does. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to Copper 90 with the local football in North Shields to Wembley. The game never stops.